Hi everyone, Kelly Callahan, Head of Marketing here at Algorand. Thanks for tuning in. We are taking the time to sit down today with Seb Quinn, who is the founder of Yieldly. Yieldly is a DeFi application on Algorand that recently launched that's seen a tremendous amount of traction uh, in the Algorand community and beyond uh, with a number of solutions that they bring to the table. So we're looking forward to sitting down here today with Seb. Um, Seb, welcome and thank you. Uh, why don't we start by you giving a little bit of background on yourself and sort of how you got into this. Um, you, you know, how you got into uh, how Yieldly came about to be and sort of what your background is. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kelly. Delighted to be here and thanks uh, everyone for watching. Um, you know, so I think the, the classic question is, you know, how did you get into blockchain? Um, for me, I sort of stumbled down the rabbit hole uh, when I first went to the Consensus Conference in New York uh, at the beginning of 2017. So right in those sort of early days, sort of maybe a couple of ICOs had happened. Um, people were very, very curious um, as to what this new uh, bit of technology was. Um, I had just moved to New York um, after spending four years working as a lawyer in Asia. And I'd been working with a lot of early stage companies helping them get access, or part of the team helping them get access to growing markets uh, in and around Asia. Um, it was really after that conference that I sort of, you know, had, had decided to sort of hone my career or focus my career, um, you know, in the decentralized uh, space. Um, I had met a number of really great companies um, at the conference and then had started working um, in an advisory capacity uh, with them helping them do, um, you know, token sales, helping them do marketing, helping them do roadshows. Uh, similar to what I've done as a lawyer, only now, bless you, only now um, as a, uh, as a, you know, as a, as a corporate advisor or an advisor. Um, you know, in, so this was, so this was, so this was 2017. Yeah, this is like, right, I think we had, we had seen one of the first um, ICOs uh, at the end of 2016 when I was a lawyer in China. Move 2017, sort of been okay. Let's get into this a little bit more. Um, and then over the course of 2017, you know, very very fortunate to just ride the 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 wave that happened, um, you know, in in the blockchain space at that time. So ended up working with some like amazing companies, you know, still around today. You know, Power Ledger, Blue Zell, uh, AirSwap, Status, uh, Simple Token. Um, and then we're also part of the first, um, help sort of some of the first big institutional players um, as they were entering the industry. So uh, we'd worked help setting up the first blockchain AI accelerator for um, JD.com, which is a sort of multi billion dollar awesome. company. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So uh, fast forward to, because Yieldly is very new, very young, right? I think you all just launched about a month ago, if I'm not mistaken. W walk me through sort of the, the launch of Yieldly and how that came to be. Yeah, sure. I mean, we uh, the product is like, about six weeks old. Um, the company is uh, a lot older than that. Um, we've been around, I mean, relatively speaking, we've been around about a year now. Um, we kind of came about and we, you know, we, we had never left, my founders and I never really left, um, you know, blockchain over the last four years. We sort of turned our hand at different things, um, you know, in various capacities from advisory investment and the like. And, you know, it was anyone in that industry at that time was inescapable, um, you know, what was happening in, in DeFi sort of at the turn of 2020 and the growth over 2020 with, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, projects that had been dormant, which we're now starting to actually, um, you know, really deliver on some of the goals they'd set, you know, in 2018 um, and, and, and the like. So some of our portfolio companies that we'd invested into started going incredibly well. And we go, well, like, well you know, what's going on here? How are we going to capitalise on this? You know, what are the things that we need to do, um, you know, to be able to ride this wave? And, uh, or, or, you know, ride this DeFi um, wave. And, we were very fortunate to still be in close contact with the guys or the team over at uh, Borderless Capital. And so, you know, in the middle of last year, I think we had co-invested in a project um, and we were talking about that. It was David Garcia and I at the time. And I mentioned, you know, some of the ideas we were floating, um, you know, as companies to potentially or, or products to potentially launch. And he said, basically, why don't you turn it into a company? And why don't you bring that idea and see if we can do something with it in the, um, you know, our grand Asia Accelerator, which they were, 
uh, this is July, August, and you know, they were going to launch that in sort of September, October. Um, you know, so my co-founder and I sort of, you know, had a discussion and thought about it and, and sort of said, why the heck not? Um, you know, what a, you know, there was a, a team here at board was that was super supportive of, um, you know, of, of DeFi generally. They were super bullish um, about Algorand and the prospects there, um, you know, and, and, you know, it was a sort of no-brainer. We have immense respect for, for Dave and his team, um, you know, and, and thought uh, we would like, you know, we were very willing to try our hand at, uh, at building um, the DeFi idea that we had at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, very lucky to, to be able to pitch, pitch the idea uh, to the long hash team. Um, they, you know, were very excited about the potential of it. Um, and then we spent uh, sort of three months in an accelerator with sort of nine other great companies um, just really refining, you know, what exactly, um, you know, Yieldy was going to be. Um, you know, the, we the knew... Three, the, the three months of that accelerator, Seb, were you engaged with all the other teams that were a part of it or the advisors that were there? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a fairly dynamic. I mean, it was initially conceived to be an in-person accelerator, um, but, you know, everyone adapted to times. And so, um, you know, you had, you had nine teams from across the world um, you know, logging in, you know, every single, you know, each day with advisors going through um, ideation sessions, going through, um, you know, market, you know, market, uh, marketing sessions, understanding the wider market, understanding how to pitch, um, you know, all the kind of things you would expect from, uh, you know, from a, a top class uh, accelerator and, um, you know, and then the long hash team and, and the other um, sort of investors and advisors that are around that were um, extremely supportive, uh, you know, to all those founders that were there. Awesome. That's great. So you so you came out of that accelerator earlier this year and had um, you fully built this project. So tell us about tell us more about Yieldly and sort of what the offering is, because I think there's a few things that you're working on or that have launched or that are about to launch. Walk us through uh, sort of what Yieldly is and how um, how it's using blockchain to make that model better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, what's Yieldly? It's the first suite of DeFi products, you know, designed and developed specifically for our grant. Um, you know, we, we had this idea to want to replicate some of the most interesting things that were happening in other ecosystems and bring them on to, you know, and, and build them within our grant. Um, you know, very quickly over the course of the accelerator, we realised that, um, you know, a, a more interesting or more fundamental um, kind of technical problem was there to be solved. And that was basically building, um, you know, this suite of DeFi smart contracts, you know, things that any other builder could come in and use to replicate, um, as I said, these interesting, you know, propositions that were existing um, elsewhere in the ecosystem. So we went to do that, you know, we want to now empower uh, the next 1 million, you know, crypto users to be able to exchange digital value without friction, inefficiency or security risk. Um, you know, what that means for a user is that we have developed, you know, great products that allow people to stake, you know, pool and swap, um, you know, the ASA assets. We also allow people to now um, swap between uh, our grant and other protocols, um, you know, the first being the, the yieldly ASA ERC20 bridge. Um, and then, of course, the other thing that we're doing, um, you know, that, that tech enables is enables us to now offer that to other third-party ASA tokens, other other companies building in the ecosystem, to be able to, um, you know, utilize our liquidity, utilize our platform, utilize our users to be able to build on top of, um, you know, and extend whatever aspect, um, you know, that they're doing that makes sense in in a DeFi setting. Um, so where, where do you see that? Where do you see that extending to? Like, what do you think the real potential is of that? Yeah, I mean, I think from a DeFi point of view, like the holy grail that we, you know, internally talk about is this sort of vertically integrated, decentralized exchange that is allowing people to swap across whatever ecosystem they're in. Um, but you know, with the kind of benefit of uh, of our grant, you know, the, the idea of being able to do that, you know, at speed, at scale, um, you know, without sacrificing risk um, or security. So, you know, that, that for us is the holy grail. There is some critical technical kind of pillar um, or foundational pieces that need to be laid to build on top of that. Um, you know, the staking pools is one, the bridging proposition is another, 
um, you know, the swapping aspect is the third kind of piece of the puzzle. And then having all of that harmonized, you know, very seamlessly so a user can log in and do that, you know, from their wallet, where, you know, wherever it is hosted and do that, you know, very, very straightforward, uh, in a very straightforward manner. So that's the world we want to get to. That's the, the kind of inspiration we have. That's what drives um, the decision making in terms of, uh, in terms of the technical applications. Um, but then, you know, once, you know, as we've sort of seen, like we've been able to build, uh, you know, these, these interesting um, smart contracts and then you can, you can commercialize them in really interesting ways, right? We can go and build, um, you know, the, this no loss lottery product, um, you know, which is a really uh, fun. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, the, I know the no loss lottery has gotten a lot of attention. I have some some algos staked, or I guess they're yieldly that are staked. Uh, that's what's your total value locked up there now? I think the this evening, so it's it's about nine p.m. over where we are. Um, I think last time we looked at it, this evening was about twenty five million algos was um, locked up, which is a pretty that's awesome amazing. lock up after six weeks. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I that's guess great traction. In Europe anyway, Kelly. So. <laughs> I just, you know, I, li I like looking at that every week. I don't think I've won yet. <laughs> no, yeah, but you know, we uh, we hope that we hope that you do. I mean, that's that's a that's a product that's evolving. Um, you know, it was really just this a proof point for us to show what these contracts could do, um, and it's taken on a life of its own. You know, people are very very attached to it already. Um, you know, we know our users from all over the world are setting alarm clocks at you know, uh, at, you know, in the middle of their nights to, to wake up and log in and, and watch it unfold. So, you know, that's, um, that's you know, that's just awesome to see as, as builders, to see people really engaging with products like that. Um, you know, and we're, we're going to continue, um, you know, following the users there, listening to their feedback and wanting to build better products, um, you know, features and things like that as a result. So perhaps make it, um, make more prizes so it's more, you know, give you a better chance at winning, for example. <laughs> Uh, it's great to see so many people tapping into that, and uh, I, you can follow it on Twitter. All of a sudden, it's Thursday evenings our time, I believe, and all of a sudden on Twitter, you see people talking about the no-loss lottery. It's very funny. Um, speaking of building, uh, can you give a little bit of insight as to you know you building on um, on top of Algorand and sort of what that was like from a developer perspective? If you know you and your team, how that went. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think, I mean, I kind of touched upon the kind of commercial reasons, you know, the commercial opportunity for building on our grand, you know, what it meant for, um, you know, being the first in an ecosystem or, or being able to, you know, build something that others would then build upon. Um, but, you know, you know, we have a great, we have a great dev team. We've got, um, you know, four full-time developers, all of them awesome in their own right, coming from um, Solidity background. Some of them are um, you know, PhDs in robotics, for example, uh, or soon to be PhDs in robotics. Um, you know, there was a sense when when the team and um, when we looked at Teal um, in terms of build that there was this natural um, and, and quite surprising, I guess, um, for, for all of us was that there was this natural um, parallel to the way that Teal is coded and the logic behind Teal and the way that um, robotics engineering um, similarly happens. So what that meant for us is that as a team, it was a particularly, um, it, you know, it wasn't a particularly big hurdle to have to, you know, when when you're considering any um, building in any new language, you know, you have to think about how difficult it will be. Building on Teal um, with the backgrounds that our team had wasn't, um, you know, wasn't a particular difficult or arduous ask and so you know that's in comparison to say um, you know other uh, programmers on places like Solidity or, or, or elsewhere that um, you know there is a uh, there would there would be a slightly longer learning curve for um, for someone scaling up from that specific background um, over to Teal but from out from out there's point of view um, very comfortable building directly in it um, and, and that was you know that was exciting because we felt a Again, that we would have, um, you know, a way to shed new insights and create new um, products to then, um, you know, allow others who uh, we know are sort of building around us or with us, um, you know, not only in the accelerator but elsewhere in the ecosystem, to kind of, um, you know, build together as a community and we could help lead the way in some aspects and follow in others. Um, and so, you know, very, um, 
you know, the, the build experience today has been, um, you know, it's been very uh, welcome and it's been sort of very straightforward. I should also mention that we've had really wonderful support, not only from, um, you know, the, the other ecosystem teams, teams in the ecosystem, but also from um, the foundation's dev team as well has been terrific. Um, you know, basically weekly chats there and, um, you know, very, very interested and um, helpful across, you know, every step that we've taken. So I uh, couldn't couldn't speak more highly of um, both the ecosystem and the foundation support um, on the on the build side as well. And yeah, you know, that, that's you know that's something that's kind of you know so critical. You know, it's a it's a it's a new and emerging kind of um, like tech language. And so uh, the more that we can build libraries and build things that others can use, the the more interesting the products that you know follow will be. Um, and you know the more interesting the user you know user experience will be as well. So we're sort of genuinely excited about what's what's around the corner and you know what's what's coming in the future is things like Teal Four and um, other other um, developments on top of our brand uh, happen. Yeah, it's really exciting. I've never uh, I've never heard the electrical engineering parallel being drawn to Teal, so I find that interesting. But you know the new models, right, and sort of this ability to write in uh, these high level languages, whether that's reach, because you all did this before. Um, reach was sort of fully integrated, which is a JavaScript like language that people can write uh, contracts or write applications on Algorand and then deploy them very easily with the, the Algorand virtual machine. So I think as that becomes even easier. So it's great to hear you say that about sort of the, the, the previous state of building on Algorand. And then I think you're right that we'll see a lot more exciting things come once, you know, the doors are really open for more and more people to uh, to tap into that. Excellent. Yeah, no, 100% agree. The other thing I'd say is that um, with the, you know, the ABM, the Algorand virtual machine, we know that, you know, big teams in other, in other ecosystems are now looking at Algorand and, and they're contemplating, you know, what, uh, that it's a much, more straightforward um, process for them to, to be able to integrate in. Um, you know, so we've, we're excited about not only the projects that have been built in, you know, natively on our ground, but those that already exist elsewhere, um, you know, making the, the, the quick transition over from uh, where, wherever they were previously, um, you know, onto our ground as well. We know that's coming and we're excited for that. Yeah, and it, it becomes easier, right? So it is really exciting, especially just given the tech and what Silvio's built here. I think that you're right. It's we're at an exciting, exciting milestone, exciting point. Um, okay, Seb. So uh, this has been super uh, interesting. I think everything you have going on is exciting. You have obviously a ton of support from the Algorand community. I see it all the time. I think it's awesome. I think you're going to continue to do great things. Uh, appreciate you sharing your vision and what's coming from Yieldly, and we will continue to follow along and, and be cheering you on here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, um, you know, for the support as always, and you know, wish you luck in the lottery as well. <laughs> Thank you, we'll see you soon.